Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And we've invited the publisher of the Podium Media, Mr. Ademola Akimbola. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. Fantastic. How are you today? Fine, thank you. How are you? All right, thanks. All right. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. The headline reads, ACF Ohanezi PDP slam Buhari as presidency alleges coup plot. And the presidency here uh, says, championed by disgruntled religious and past political leaders, the intention is to eventually overthrow the country into a tailspin, which would compel a forceful and undemocratic change of leadership. And then uh, the ACF is saying the criticism is done in good faith and if acted upon, will help improve the situation in the country. It went on to say it's wrong to see all critics as disgruntled religious and past leaders with dark motives. Some of them mean well for the government and the country. Ohaneze Ndigbo responding to this says Ohaneze is not interested in anything coup. Ohaneze is saying that the president should listen to us and address the nation. President should reorder his steps. He should root his governance in justice as everything has become an injustice, especially against Igbo. Uh, the worsening insecurity despite 10.02 trillion naira six-year security vote. And that's a, you know, an analysis by budget. Ahmed, Minister of Finance, appears before Senate, says army got one trillion naira in two years. Sheikh Gumi here says CBN should pay 100 million naira Greenfield students' ransom before it's too late. Pension operators seek alternative investments as assets decline. Still on the Punch newspaper, there's a picture of parents here who seem to be protesting. And the writer reads, parents of 29 college students still in kidnappers' den protest at the National Assembly. We know this happened yesterday, uh, but of course they locked the gate of the National Assembly, denied them entrance. So parents and uh, members of the Student Union Government of the Greenfield University and uh, of course the Federal College of First Year Mechanization protested you know, for the release of their children. Also on the Punch newspaper, Ondo to repatriate 137 illegal forest occupants arrested by Amotekun. CCT chair gets Senate's two-week ultimatum to defend assault allegation. Subscribers insist on Pantami's resignation despite NIN SIM linkage extension. Police nab 52-year-old man for defiling three daughters and neighbor's niece. Lagos Assembly suspends three local government chairmen for flouting guidelines. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, herdsmen ejected from Ondo, driven away by Kwara residents and security agents. Big right. stories there on the, yes, on the Punch Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's move to the Daily Sun uh, and see what we can also find over there. The big one, top right, you can see IPOB shifts sit at home to May 31st. Other shutdown of uh, schools, markets. Um, Masob condemns attack on Waziriki. Presidency raises the alarm. There is a plot to topple Buhari's government. Fingers religious political leaders. Politicizing security dangerous, says uh, Diri. And also Lagos begins installation of 20, or 2,000 rather CCTV to offer free internet to public schools. Reps weighed in as parents of abducted Kajina students protest at the National Assembly. Schools no longer safe, say uh, NA, uh, NANS. Economic crunch, federal government to slash salaries of government workers and merge agencies. And also article to uh, demand total war on terror, suggests recall of ex-soldiers. Kidnapping, banditry, not federal offenses, says the federal government says security agencies on the trail of saboteurs. Government and PDP trade tackles over insecurity. Dozens feared dead <coughs> as Boko Haram attacks Borno community. Gunmen kill eight, injure six in Abia and Kaduna. Those are the stories on the Daily Sun. On the Nigerian Tribune, mothers of 17 abducted Kaduna varsity students cry out, please help us. Weep during protests at National Assembly gates. Bandits release one student. And we see pictures of four parents here who are in tears and uh, obvious agony 
over the kidnap of their children. And above the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, return rice seized from Ibadan market in two weeks. Senate tells customs. Alleged sexual assault, Babai Jesha to face five charges, risk life imprisonment. Life imprisonment. FG may review payroll and merge agencies to cut cost. That's according to the finance minister. Kano Hisper at Sachs official allegedly caught with married woman in hotel. Amoteko evicts another 137 persons from Undo Forest. Alleged assaults. Senate gives CCT chairman two weeks to prepare his defense. And lastly, on the Nigerian Tribune, opponents plotting illegal confab to, throw, to overthrow presidency. On the nation this morning, anxiety over abducted students uh, as a deadline expires. Headers evicted from Mondo Forest and Quara Village. Also, Lagos slams five sexual charges on Babai Jisha. Army got 1.08 trillion naira in 28 months, says Minister. Also, PDP lawmakers accuse APC's government of constitutional breaches. We can also find here, presidency, we've uncovered, uncovered rather, plot to bring down Buhari. DHQ warns military chiefs, politicians against treason. And Khan rejects accusation of religious leaders' involvement. Islamic Council seeks probe. Lagos Assembly uh, suspends three council chairmen and INEC verifies new polling units. Those are the stories we will be sharing this morning. Uh, Ms. Ademola Akimbala, it's uh, up to you now. Thank you. The news all over Nigeria is quite overwhelming. It's quite sad news, right on the edge. But I think the, the, um, the peak of all of this is the statement by the president that there's been a, uh, um, that they've discovered plans by some people to talk for the presidency of um, um, of uh, Mr. Omar Bari. Quite frankly, I would like to summarize that feeling. We're going to say, I think, uh, with the portion of the Bible that says, we can run it when no one pursue it. Um, I don't realize it's shortcomings. I don't realize it's failure. It is natural for this government to begin to assume. Maybe rightly too, that some people want it out. Yes, in the minds of every Nigeria, this government has already toppled. That's not the truth. This government has already been overthrown in court. In the mind of every Nigeria, because things are not working. And I sincerely do hope that this alarm that the president has raised will not um, progress into um, wanting arrest and detention of anti um, uh, of various individuals and organizations who have been calling for this government to step down. Um, it's beginning to look like this is a plot, this is a well-organized plan by government to clamp down on, 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 on opposition and I, I hope it doesn't get to that stage. But let's, coming back to the issue, we said it here last week that the National Assembly has that mandate at this critical time in the history of this country to rescue the country. In the history of Nigeria, no president has ever resigned. So we shouldn't expect this president to resign. He is not going to resign. Okay, and I do not in any way support um, the forceful military intervention. I do not support the coup. But the easiest way is for National Assembly to impeach Mr. President on grounds of incompetence. So this is the period that we expect National Assembly, if it has the spine, if it has the will and the courage, to rise up to the occasion and deliver Nigeria. Okay, we are not heading in the right direction at all. We are not. The the the, the kidnapping of the Cardinal University students is beginning to look like another chibok. Okay, and you won't blame the parents. A lot of students are kidnapped. We never found them. Even apart from Chibok, a lot of these things have gone unreported. And it seems the president and his team, they've come to their wit's end. And that's what we're seeing. And that's the United States which will rescue us. Okay? Talking about kidnapping and boundaries and not, not um, federal offenses, legally and constitutionally, you may say yes, that is true. But morally, it is the responsibility of the armed forces of Nigeria to ensure the safety of lives and security. It is the responsibility of the commander in chief of the armed forces 
uh, with Mr. President to ensure the safety of every Nigerian. And that is why I called here last week for collaboration. Okay, state governors should forget about political affiliations, they should forget about PDP, APC, they should work together. There should be synergy, there should be networking, all hands should be on deck. This is a national emergency. Mm. This is not a time for any governor to, 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 to play to the gallery. This is time for everybody to work together. Okay. Yeah, but, so, but should, shouldn't they have I, been I, declared quite, federal offenses by yes, now? Please. Say again? I'm asking, shouldn't they have been declared federal offenses by now? I mean, sh shouldn't we at least see them as federal offenses now? See, you know, looking at the rates... Long time ago, to... long time ago, we have said that we should have declared a state of emergency in Nigeria. A state of emergency where some aspects of the Constitution will be suspended. Because critical problems require very drastic solutions. This is not the time for sophistry. This is not the time for any constitutional... Um, legality, extensive one. This is a time, like rightly said, for federal government to step in okay. and begin to show that it is capable. Yeah. So, Mr. Akimbola, our former Vice President Atiko Bubaka okay. is suggesting that the government recalls retired military officers and for the government to declare a total war on terrorism. Do you see this as one of the likely solutions? It is not, it is not a viable solution. It is not. First, in Nigeria, we don't have that culture of calling on the reserves. And like I said last week, how many of those reserves are in good health? Mm -hmm. How many of them are happy? Okay, you, you, you want to call on people who have retired, that is when they are happy. If they left happily, and if you have been taking care of them, you'll be paying their pension, you'll be leading up to your own expectation. When you've not been doing that, you're not going to call on anybody. They won't even respond. Okay, so that to me, it is not the solution. The solution is to get more people into the various armed forces. Okay, if 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 we have a shortfall in terms of numerical strength, let's get in more young people, let's equip them, let's motivate them, and let's work together. A lot of local vigilante groups have a, have critical roles to play in wars against terror. You realize that you need local intelligence. You need people who are on ground who are in in those villages to actually work with you. But when you don't bring them on board, when you don't factor them into security architecture, you're going to have problems. Okay, because they understand the terrain, they know the people. All right. And we've been talking about the the the, 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 the right level, okay, in terms of equipment for the army. Are they well equipped? Are they well equipped? Do they have what they need to fight this war? Are they happy fighting this war? Are they happy with this current government? Because you can, you, you can actually assemble a group of people to fight a war, but if you are not happy, they actually won't fight any war. Like someone was saying, how come that Boko Haram, each time they attack, they have so much time to plan the attack, they carry out the attack, they retreat back into the villages, and nobody, nobody among the armed forces shows up to do anything. Okay, and that brings to the issue of connivance. Like I said last week, active connivance of members of Nigerian armed forces. We could have fit colonies who are actually working against the state. So you can't rule that out. It, it, it's it's um, sad that we have to come here do we, week in week saying the same thing about insecurity and we've been on this. The services have been placed going to 34 months now. We haven't seen any changes. And like I said, we're not likely to see any changes now or in the near future. A lot of things are wrong with the way the generation is set up. People are not happy. People want this government out. People can't wait on the Kimbala, some of those people who are... Issue, right? Yes, Mr. Kimbala, some of those people who are unhappy are yes. the parents of these students who were kidnapped from the Federal College of Forestry yes. Mechanization in Afaka in Kaduna State. We saw that, you know, in addition to that, there's the issue of the Greenfield University students who were kidnapped. And... Uh, the bandits released, you know, a statement. We saw that they granted an interview, you know, to, all, to the press where they demanded a hundred million naira ransom. They also said that they needed 10 brand new Honda motorcycles or they would begin to kill the remaining students. You know, in response to all of this, I am yet to see, you know, government statements or from the Kaduna state government. And now we've seen parents, you know, protesting at the gates of the National Assembly, you know, with almost nothing seeming to be done at the moment. I don't know what your assessment is of this. 
you know, vis-a-vis -vis what Shegumi has said now, that uh, just yesterday, that 100 million naira is almost inconsequential when you consider the lives of, 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 of those children, and that the government should be able to pay the money, asking the CBN to do so as well. Well, it, it is unfortunate that we've gotten to a state where we have um, unwittingly legitimized and legalized um, negotiations with bandits. And the thing about this, once you start, you cannot stop. They are asking for 100 million and you pay it. Next week, another set comes up and they want 500 million and they are going to pay again. Okay, so it, 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 um, it's a delicate situation that we are in. As much as parents are concerned about their children, as much as we want all the children to come back safe, the question we need to ask ourselves is that have we got to a stage where all we need to do is to negotiate with the bandits? Okay, so we might as well just give up. So, okay, we don't have security in Nigeria. We just need to save money, raise money, save money for ransom because we know that the Nigerian armed forces will not do anything about it. Okay. okay, so I don't want to come on national TV to encourage this kind of situation where you, you pay their money. But whatever needs to be done, needs to be done. Okay, the right. security operatives, they know what they need to do. Uh, the, 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 the state government was working on the ground, I believe. Because at times like this, you don't come into the um, public space to share all of the things that you are doing. But I sincerely believe that the city government is doing something. And I pray that these children will return alive. That's all we can do at this time. We can only pray. There's uh, something on the Daily Sun this morning. Pray. The IPOB, uh, speaking of us, uh, stay at home, uh, sit at home rather, on the 31st of May. Uh, what's your response to that? It has never worked and it will never work. And between now and then, I won't be surprised if some of the operators are arrested and detained. Okay? And then, um, like I said, the federal government is gradually setting the stage. It, 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 it's gradually putting together plans to be able to crack that on the opposition. Okay? So between now and then, I won't be surprised if operators are arrested and detained and sit at home doing what? <laughs> we. we, we we need a spontaneous mass response. Sitting at home does not change anything. We live in a country where over 80% of the population depends on daily income. Okay? People need to go out in the morning, come back in the evening to to risk to eat, to take care of their children. Sitting at home has never worked. It will never work. We've been sitting at home in Nigeria. We need action. We need action. We need people to begin to hold leaders responsible. Last week, I talked about the need for us at all levels to begin to hold our leaders responsible. Councillor, local government chairman, commissioner, governors. That is the kind of mass action that can change Nigeria. Sit at home, it's just going to be a waste of time. I don't see it acting anything. Well, it's their way of, uh, I guess it's their way of a peaceful protest. Uh, and they've done it, uh, I think, uh, for two, three uh, years now. Let's also talk, um, move back yeah. to talking security. Uh -huh. There's uh, something on the nation there. It says the army got 1.0 trillion naira in 28 months, says a minister. Um, there's also a, a, a release from budget yesterday that uh, stated that 10 trillion naira had been allocated for security since 2015. Um, we've, of course, uh, still continue to see that there's not been much change with regards to our security. Um, so how much, you know, of a probe do you think should go into the expenditure that has gone into security and the Nigerian um, security agencies in the last couple of years? I think we, we should start with the service chiefs that served under President Jonathan. Okay? A lot has been said about Dasuki. A lot has been said about what the service chiefs did. Okay? To the money or to the funds that were allocated to them. That probe needs to be concluded and the immediate past service teams also need to be probed. Okay, I, I, I said about this on this program, there's a difference between money allocated in the budget and money that's actually, that's actually used. And that is the pain of Nigeria, corruption. 10 trillion must have been allocated. Did it get to the right sources? Was this money spent on the right um, purpose, the, 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 the personnel who should have gotten a chunk of this of, of this one, did they get it? Okay? Did we buy equipment? 
So we, 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 we can bandy figures around, we can talk about 10 trillion, we can talk about 50 trillion. The reality on ground is that this money is not being used for the right purpose. We're not seeing the results. We're not seeing the results. All right. Because I do not believe that if we have that, that huge account, if we have committed it and you were against terror, we probably will have seen better so than we are seeing now. Okay. Uh, Demola Kimbola, thank you so much uh, yeah. for joining us and for sharing thank your you. views on these uh, stories yes, uh, this you. morning. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. You thank too. You. Yes. Thanks for staying with us. All right. Uh, we, we'll go on a short break. When we come back, what happened on this day, uh, the 5th of May, many years ago? I'm going back to the year 2010. It is uh, one day that will forever remain in Nigeria's history. And uh, we'll share with you. Yes, and I'm going three years later to still talk about security, you know, where all this started from. Do you stay with us?